welcome everybody to RBCM at Outside the webinar series that begins with the carillon that was beautiful we couldn't name that tune let us know if you recognize that tune if any of you heard that um well welcome my name is liz crocker and i am here at the royal bc museum outside the museum today i'm in the native plant garden and rbcm outside is a webinar series that happens every second week and um, we are live outside so just about anything can happen um, and uh, today we are doing the i naturalist edition it's all gonna be all about using i naturalist how and why and how it works and why you want to use it and how you can connect to the royal bc museum through uh, i naturalist and i want to acknowledge that here at the royal bc museum i am standing on um, with my colleague dr gavin hankey on uh, the territory of the lekwungen speaking people also known as the songhees and esquimalt first nations so very grateful to, as always to be working here and learning here as well um so if you've never watched the program before it's a webinar so i can't see or hear you so you, but you can interact with us if you're in the zoom or you're on facebook through the chat so please if you have any questions or comments please um share them and my colleague kim is in the room and she will get those to us and we also record these so if you've missed past programs or you want to share this particular program with someone you can check out uh, the museum's youtube channel uh, after the program, in, a, in about a day or two, we'll have the recording up there and you can um, watch later. And um, we, uh, in November, there's actually only going to be one RBCM outside because there's a Remembrance Day is a when falls on a Wednesday. So, um, and that program is not up yet. So watch the website. It's going to be November 25th. Um, watch the website for that one. And we do have a special RBCM at outside happening in December that's related to our new exhibition, the Emily Carr exhibition. Um, fresh seeing and it's going to be that one is going to be uh, on December 9th, Wednesday, 2pm and we're going to do a virtual outside walking tour of Emily Carr's neighborhood, which the museum is pretty much smack dab in the middle of. So um, join us for that one, especially if you're a fan of Emily Carr or curious about um, uh, her world that she lived in here in Victoria. So um, I think that was all of the my housekeeping. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn the cam. I'll be behind the camera. Um, we're in a loud spot, but we are mic'd right now. So hopefully you can hear us okay. And um, I'm going to let Gavin is going to be using an iPad to demonstrate iNaturalist. And we're just going to be having a conversation. Um, but I can tell you, uh, before we started the program, we are surrounded by all different kinds of birds. Gavin's a good birder and he ID'd a whole bunch of them. So I hope he didn't jinx us and we're gonna see some, but we've also surrounded by lots of native plants we can use to ID for examples in iNaturalist if we can't uh, get a moving critter so animal. So <laughs> Gavin, I'm going, he hates the word critter. I don't know why, it's a biologist thing. I'm gonna flip the camera around and then gonna give him the mic. Okay, there's Gavin. Hang on, Gavin. I'm going to mic you. And now you should be. All right. Yeah, you Hopefully. can hear me now. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't like the word creature either. So that's a uh, critter and creature, two of the words I don't put in anything I write. So, Gavin, why don't you start by what, what exactly is iNaturalist? iNaturalist is a global app for helping people document biodiversity. It doesn't matter if you're a scientist, it doesn't matter if you're just an everyday homeowner you can get out there and document what's in your garden, what's down the street. You go for a hike, take pictures of the plants or the frogs or the snakes or whatever you find, even mushrooms. Whatever you can photograph, generally you can get into iNaturalist. Even if you don't photograph it on a, on a phone or an iPad, you can photograph with a regular camera, import the photos later. But basically the photographs are the key to identifying what you found. And it's one of these fun things. It's, it's like trophy hunting, but nothing gets hurt. So you can go up, find a mushroom, take your pictures, submit it. And then that information, the photo, the location, the date, even the time of day can help scientists around the world document biodiversity, increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. It's really cool. So um, uh, I forgot to introduce you. Ah. <laughs> Uh, I'm the curator of vertebrate zoology here, so I cover everything with a backbone minus humans. Um, and so documenting what is here in British Columbia today is critical. 
uh, if we'd have had this app available a hundred years ago and document the change, like a hundred years ago, you could have iNaturalist a basking shark right off British Col or Victoria's waterfront. You won't do that today. So something as simple as that, presence or absence is valuable data to help scientists understand what's going on on the planet right now. And so a hundred years from now, anything we photograph today may not be here and it would we will document its presence in 2020 at whatever, what is it, uh, 2.06 p.m. in Victoria. So um, that's the beauty of iNaturalist. Anyone around the world can log in if they have an iNaturalist account. And even if, if you just wanna explore and see where would I find a blue jay? Where would I find a stellar's jay? You can look at those records and you get a really, uh, sort of, it's not quite real time, it's a little delayed, but you get, you get to see where life is on this planet. And you're not restricted to your own backyard. You can just go exploring. Like what's in Antarctica? Do you wanna know? Use iNaturalist, you can find it. You know, just start looking for penguins. Doesn't matter what species you wanna look for, it's out there. Do you want to try and uh, <laughs> demo? Like, what's the first thing you would Uh oh. I think you're uh, press home to. Oh, yeah, you're. Yep. There we go. Okay. Okay, full disclosure. Normally I do this on my iPhone. So I'm using this tablet. It's a little different for me. Um, iNaturalist on, on a, a portable piece of equipment like this, an iPhone or a tablet has a few restrictions. There's a lot more available on a regular computer. You can look at, there's a whole bunch of other menus you can look at to restrict what you look at or increase what you look at. So for example, the most common thing to do is to photograph something, submit the photograph, suggest what you think it is, and then people around the world can then weigh in on the software and either correct you or agree with you. And it's sort of like, it's like a crowdfunding thing, but just for identifications. It's a lot of fun. It's very respectful. I've never had any sort of a negative thing, even I, and I get things wrong. Don't ask me about mushrooms. Quite often my mushrooms get re-identified. I'm okay with that. Um, but basically you, um, you go in and there's all kinds of buttons. You can, you can choose projects or other things, but the basic thing to do is just to click observe and you can, you can basically say whether you have no photo, use the phone's camera, or you can have a, ca a photo that you've taken yesterday, a week ago, a year ago, um, and you can submit those. I've actually taken photographs from my old SLR camera, and those photographs go back to 2004. And those records, as long as you know the date and the location where you took the photo, it's, it totally works in iNaturalist. I submitted a photograph of a leopard frog at my dad's cottage off Lake Winnipeg. And that goes back to the nineties. And there was no problem. I knew exactly what corner of what street, where and when I took the picture. So it's really easy to use. And, and this to make this user-friendly for citizen science, I mean, everything's pretty obvious. So let's just take a picture, up comes the camera and let's go over to this, this is just, we, I actually found a bunch of birds before we started today. And uh, I, I mean, I could rattle off the list. It's the only one I didn't get a photograph of was the yellow rump warbler. They were just too skittish. Um, but here you could just, here's the plant. And you want to get a good photo. The, the better photo you can get, the easier it is to do identification. So click that for a photo. If you like it, say yes, use the photo. Uh, do, 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 do. turn on, look. oh, just cancel that for now. Go away. Normally, so no, okay, it's not saying, it's saying here that we have no location because it's, it's not set up at the moment. But once you take a picture, either from your cameras, um, the, the photos you have already in hand or the new one you've just taken, you'll get a date, a time, location, and then you can specify whether it's a captive thing like if you went to your garden and took a picture of your favorite rose, you'd have to say that's cultivated or captive. Um, there are records in iNaturalist of, there's a couple of funny ones on the mainland of humans. You know, and I think there was a school that went out and did iNaturalist records and there were some pretty funny ones. 
Some of them might have been classroom pets. So there's a little bit of that, but you do have to wade through that sometimes. You can also go to projects. So I'm working on a project. There's one project to document wall lizards in North America. I've got another project with amphibians and reptiles on Vancouver Island. So there's all kinds of projects you can sign in and help and add your records to those projects. But the, the fundamental thing is, what did you see? And you click on that and it'll give you a list. And that, the really cool thing is the list is diverse. Sometimes it's bizarre if, the, if the, the software doesn't understand what you're photographing, but on this case, it got it right. Salal. And it will tell you it's visually similar to Salal. And it'll even tell you if Salal has been seen nearby, which is really cool to help you out with identifications. And then you go, and all you have to do after that is go share. Yeah, missing location. Actually, let's go back. Let's go to the location. Get out of here. Now, this will give you an idea of what is possible. I mean, if you, we could say it's Cape Town, but that would be lying. So you go over and you zoom in. This is satellite. Come on, catch up to me. I'm not that fast. And you zoom in to where you saw it. Oh, there's Beacon Hill Park. Oops. Oh, there's an interesting bird. I just heard that. Thunderbird Park. And you can get down to a crazy level of detail. So that looks like the walkway. We're probably right about there. And then basically, I'm not seeing save. It's a little different on my phone. Royal BC Museum, look at that. And it gives you a latitude, a longitude, and it'll give you accuracy as well. So it's setting an accuracy at 59 meters. I generally go for 30 meters, because when I'm photographing a bird or a lizard, I, I, I have way too many lizard records, to be honest. Um, animals move, like the plant, you could, you could pin this one down to a square meter if you really wanted to. And then once you've got the location, the date, everything like that, you just hit share. And then it's uploaded. And then a day from now or a week from now, whenever someone gets around, they'll verify your ID or correct it maybe. And it, it just takes a few seconds and that's it. Boom, it's live and waiting to go. So people, people around the world can see that and help refine the identifications. And it's a lot of fun. And the only limitation that I've found so far is the size of the object. So if you can get a good crisp photograph, it works. So let's say you find like, for example, I catch vertebrates, I, like birds, frogs, fish, whatever, that's easy. If you catch a fish when you're out angling and you've got it on the deck and you take your picture, that works too. You know, even if you let it go again. The real trick with iNaturalist is the tiny things. So lichen, getting a really nice crisp close up shot of lichen probably better with an SLR camera than with a, an iPad or an iPhone. Tiny insects, seriously difficult with a tablet or a phone. So that might be something where professional equipment could be used. So you might have to log the date, the time, the location where you caught the animal, take it away, photograph it, and then save it as a specimen. Um, but that's entirely possible. I've got some photographs of spiders, of flies and things like that. And people weigh in and give me a pretty reasonable identification on it, but it's that easy. You know, seconds of effort and you're helping science and it's all wonderful. Now, what is involved in our new profile? So we have, the, the Royal BC Museum has its own profile for, um, for iNaturalist. I mean, I could log in. I've, I've added my own photographs from years ago to the RBCM profile. Um, and so whenever you make a record, so eh, come on back. So if I take another picture, let's go do that actually. It's nice and quick. Let's go, I, well actually there's a Blackberry here. Let's see if it likes that Blackberry. I think my Blackberry at home would mess this thing up because it doesn't have thorns. That looks reasonable. Now here's an issue. There's a couple of species in there. There's something in the background. There's this. Sorry, I'm not a botanist. I don't know many plants. Let's just say use that photo. Come on. Yeah, my fingers are cold. What did you see? 
sometimes this gets really funny because you could get you, you could get all kinds of funny records depending on what's in the background. So when you're taking your picture, it's critical to get a really nice clean shot. It's also very difficult sometimes, as I tried to do with the birds in this garden. Some animals don't sit still for you. Let's just say that's Himalayan blackberry. Um, oh, I don't, oh, right, notes. So in the notes, when I do these and I want to tag it to the Royal BC Museum, uh, do, 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 go at RBCM. Oh, that was difficult. Okay, return, and we're done. And then again, same sort of thing. Pick your location. So now some phones, this one isn't set up for it, we, we, uh, the, the location. So for example, my iPhone, because the latitude and longitude with the location of the photograph is all automatically coded in, I don't have to do this step. The phone automatically says, yep, that's where you are. I kind of got myself all messed up here. Yeah, we're on this side of the pond, just a few meters away. Save. Whoop, I think I hit the power. Save. And it'll say again, and then you just share. And it's so it'll upload and it will tag to the RBCM's uh, account because of that, that simple little note that you added into the comments field. So very simple, mm -hmm. tag it, be part of the museum and help science in general. Not that Himalayan blackberry is a rare plant around here. Some, some records are, people do luck out and get an absolutely rare animal or plant. And it's great to have those records. Um, I personally, if I, if I found something endangered, I think I would be a little bit more evasive on the location, maybe a few more meters away, because you don't want people going in there and everyone running in to take a picture of this rare thing. Um, let the rare animals live or plants live uh, in peace. But um, it's that easy. It's a, it's, it's a hoot. I've been doing it now for just over a year. And I think I've got 1,600 some odd records. Yeah. And so if you don't know what an, uh, an animal or a plant is, that's one of the benefits of using the RBCM at RBCM. Well, yeah. It is possibly identified. Well, that's, well that's, that's the beauty of iNaturalist and us. So at the museum, we've got all kinds of, we've got a botanist, entomologist, marine, in, marine invertebrate specialist. I, I'll do the vertebrates. Um, Claudia, Darren, Claudia is an entomology collections manager. Darren is our mammal and bird preparator, also spider experts. Um, we can weigh in on the identifications and help, but also the global community does that too. So um, it's sort of a double, double good. So the global community will help you ID it and we will help you ID things. When you submit your record, you don't have to know what it is. You could, you could submit it as unidentified plant or for example, there's a hummingbird above us here. I can hear it squeaking away. If I took a picture of that and it's a lousy picture, you could, be, you could leave it as hummingbird, you know, leave it very evasive. And the, the, if possible, other people could come in and say, I think it was an Anna's hummingbird, or I think it was a Rufus hummingbird. So the global community and of course our, ourselves, we, we can help refine that. So even if you, there's a mushroom that you take a picture and you think it's an ammonita, you might be poisonous. You don't know. You can take a picture and just let the world identify it for you. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So you got three observations in here now. I know, three. Yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm not going to probably get a bird here. This is, they're, they're really being evasive. I snuck down earlier and I, I saw a fox sparrow. Oh, I didn't get a picture of the fox sparrow. That reminds me. Yellow rump warbler, fox sparrow, downy woodpecker, um, American robin, of course. I saw a northern flicker, cedar waxwings, Anna's hummingbird, um, juncos. Yeah, it was on a little spotted toey. It's the garden is crawling with birds right now. It's, it's beautiful. Well, we can have a look up there. I saw juncos up there. And when you said I'm good at birding, that's kind of wrong. I'm good at the easy ones. Don't put me in front of a bunch of shorebirds or gulls and ask for identifications. If they're really easy, I'll get them. <laughs> yeah. The Anna's hummingbird has been hanging out on this, this tree that's lost its leaves already. But part of the problem today is the lighting and the vehicle noise. Um, 
that's a sizable truck going by. But um, when you get something that's terribly backlit like that, the photo can be hard to, uh, to identify. Oh, I forgot one bird, Buick's ran. I saw one of those here too. Uh, and, I, and again, didn't get a picture of it. I'm gonna post the pictures that I took. I just quite often, because I, I worry about um, keeping my, the battery charge on my camera, um, I will just run around and just take pictures. And then when I get home, trim them so that I'm focusing just on the bird or the lizard or the frog or whatever. And then I'll submit them later because my phone, it's, it's easy. I don't have to remember where I saw it because the phone tags the location. But I mean, we've got licorice ferns here. You could tag one of those. I'm not sure how iNaturalist does on mosses. It would be fun to try. But the identification is entirely based on the experts. Oh, there's an Anna's hummingbird right there. That's nice, almost in view. Um, <laughs> but whether you can identify mosses or lichens, it depends on who's on iNaturalist uh, to help you with IDs. There we are, look at that. Sit down. Let's see if I can get you. Nope, you've gone. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I suppose it would be cheating if we set up a bird feeder, wouldn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, in my garden, I think in about an hour, I got 16 species of birds without even trying. Um, and that was with my, my SLR camera. And then I, just, I, knew my, I knew where I saw them based on the photographs in my garden relative to the features in the garden. I was able to get that exact, within a meter of location where that bird was. So really fun. Can you try one more plant? Maybe and just yeah. down the steps one more time? All right, well, let's do this fern. So basically you see a fern. Oh, this one's even starting to get some spores. Yeah, it'll, it'll work just from that. So basically um, you find something you want. You can actually submit it without a photo. I've done a few of those with some of my early lizard records because they were accounts that people have given me. And you can search for records because I've suggested what species it is because I know what lizard I was, I, I was, I was studying. And um, so you can search for records without the photos. So that's handy. And then what I do, if there are records without a photograph, I go back to the site. If someone said it was at, uh, 500 Douglas Street, and it's a wall lizard. They're like, oh, well, I don't have a record from there. I'll go there and I'll try to get a record for that site and make my own so that we have a, a photographic record. So you can go back and without, records without a photo are still quite, quite useful. But anyway, get your camera. There we are. Oh, I'm gonna, sorry, my hand's in the way. There's the photo. It's good enough. You think you like that? Use photo. Come on. And then up here, what did you see? You can take other pictures if you want. Sometimes, come on. Oh, got to get rid of that. Loading suggestions. Well, that's saying all kinds of things here. I thought that was a licorice fern. Am I wrong? Yeah, okay. Well, as again, I am certainly no botanist. Um, where's, where's Ken? We need Ken. <laughs> Let's just call it that and we'll see what the world says. Let me go in, pick the location in the deep in the wilds of Victoria. Kevin, a question. If, if you had set up iNaturalist um, on this device you're using, you wouldn't have to choose the location each time or would you? Exactly, it, like for my phone, if, if we just set it up to, so that it could read where the phone is, that information would be automatically downloaded. So some people send me photographs of lizards. Oh, there's a gray squirrel. Ha ha, hello. Um, I'm actually talking to a squirrel on camera. You got that? Yeah, that's great. That's embarrassing. Um, yes, I talk to wildlife. Um, so people have sent me photographs from their garden and whatever phone tablet they used recorded the location and the date as metadata in the actual image. So even though I didn't take the picture, that image still gave me the exact spot in their garden where they took the picture. So um, you can get photos that way. And it, 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 
I get a couple of photos a week of lizards or, you know, do you know what this is questions? And I love those. Um, so yeah, it is possible. Um, if, if this was set up to record its, its location to, to not have to do that map map function. Another neat thing that I photographed that people might not think to photograph are egg cases. I was out at Tofino on holiday and I found uh, ratfish egg cases and I naturalist tagged them. It knew what it was. Same with um, skates, skate egg cases. They're quite distinctive. And if you know what species it is, you can tag that as well. It doesn't tell you where the egg was laid, but it does tell you where it washed up, which is still kind of interesting information. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's really cool. Put it back in. Go ahead. <laughs> All this technology. Am I mic'd now, Kim? Yes, you are. Sounds, okay. I just wanted to add a couple things. Um, if there's any educators or parents out there that want to use iNaturalist. So to have an iNaturalist account, you have to be 13 plus years. So you can use it with uh, students that are that age. <clears throat> Um, you know, making sure that they are, you know, uh, accepting that they are 13 plus when they, they put their account in. And if not, you can do, you can make a class account um, and then have all the, the observations um, from your students go under your account. You can do it that way. Um, but I was just, apparently uh, there's also iNaturalist Seek, which uh, I hadn't heard of till this morning, but it's for um, working with younger kids. Um, and so um, it's a little bit different, but it allows, um, it just allows a little more freedom. Um, and um, I don't think it's connected to the entire iNaturalist network, um, but it, it's got a lot of identifications already stored in there. And so can, um, there's still the satisfaction of finding out what your picture is without collecting to the wider network. So it's just a little bit more internet safe. Um, and there is a teacher's guide that goes with it as well. But the other thing to think about if you're considering using iNaturalist is, um, well, the first thing is you want to make sure that you are have practiced with it a lot yourself. Um, and so that you can do all the troubleshooting and really comfortable with it. But the other thing is to think about maybe you just want to start with, if you haven't already, um, going outside with um, your young learners and just um, uh, strengthening observation skills and giving them that opportunity to just explore in a natural area. They You can give them sketch pads. They can use drawing skills to that that those observation skills or the that natural skill is a really significant one for all stem careers and um just use it and it really allows you to to really look at a creature or an animal in detail <clears throat> and get oh i said creature and Gavin is also a scientific illustrator, knows the value of really looking closely at animal by drawing. Um, and so, you know, maybe you don't want to use a screen, but um, uh, but if you do decide to go that route, know that there's lots of online tutorials and guides that can help you with that. And especially, I know there are a, a lot of lucky school districts that have iPads in all the classrooms and iPads are great for um, smaller uh, kids, especially if they want to go out and take pictures. But it's really that idea of um, getting, um, uh, young people and all people uh, interested in exploring. There's so much uh, diversity outside, even if you live in the city where we are here, a small city, but it's still a city and we are surrounded by a lot of uh, diversity here. So um, I am going to flip the camera back to Gavin. Do you have any final words to say, Gavin, before we? Uh, actually, well, uh, oh, I hang on, if you do, I'm gonna have to mic you, oh, hold on, okay. hang on, hang on. Okay. Yeah, my big thing with iNaturalist is don't be afraid to make a mistake. You know, uh, a good portion of things that I've photographed and made a tentative ID. I mean, I'm embarrassed that sometimes my spiders are completely wrong. And a lot of my things, I found a, a millipede. Uh, I wasn't even close to what I thought it was based on what iNaturalist suggested. And, you know, people around the world will, will weigh in and help you out with it. And they're, it's, it's a really nice community to work with. So I, I'm really enjoying it and I hope you guys do too. Thanks, Gavin. Kim, before I close off, are there any uh, questions? No, we had some folks commenting about the, um, how to use the devices cameras at your location. So we covered that really well Great. and just enjoying uh, seeing the app in use. Great. 
Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. And um, yeah, like exactly like what Gavin said, don't be afraid. Just go out and try it. It's free. It's easy. If you've got a smart device, it's right there. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'll let Gavin wave goodbye to you. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye, everybody.